Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about Songwriting 101 in Cubase 13. The song is the thing. You'll hear that over and over again in various discussions on music. For those who don't know, when I say Songwriting 101, that's a term that's usually given when you're taking the very first class in something. And that's what I'm going for with this video. To try to give you an in, a way to begin in creating songs, and also to become aware of some of the tools that Cubase has that in many ways will help pull you through this process, which is very easy to get stalled in and never complete what you're trying to do. First up, like I always recommend, build things from a chord track. So I'm gonna open up the lower zone, look at a few chords I have down here. Pick out ones I like and drag them up onto the chord track. Close out my lower zone. I'm gonna select these chords and drag them onto a VST instrument. And then we begin from here. In a previous video, I showed you how to explode your chord track. And that's what I've done with these orchestral strings here. As you add your VST tracks, as you're trying to build up some kind of inspiration to your song, for example, I'm gonna add this bass part in here. As I add the tracks, I go to the tab that says chords, and then I go to the thing that says live input, I can choose various options, but if I choose the option that says chords, this allows me to play any note on the VST, but it's automatically going to follow the chord track. So if I play this project and then just kind of hit random notes, it's automatically going to play the right notes for me, so all I have to do really is worry about the rhythm. Once I get a bass part going like this, Next up, I'll bring Groove Asian in, load up some kind of drum kit that I like, then I'll either drag in some kind of pattern or play in my own pattern. So far, I've been working with four bars, but let's expand this to 16 bars. I can set my loop point over these four bars. If I hold Shift and C, that allows me to do a global copy of everything. Move my cursor to the end and then hit Control V, and I can quickly paste everything, my chords and my tracks. I do it four times. I like to add arranger events in these kind of things. So I'm going to put an arranger track here and then draw an event over all 16 of these bars. It gives me something quickly to grab a section of the song and loop it. For a little extra inspiration, I added some transitions in here. That's good enough for a basic track. Now comes the part where we need to emphasize the actual song writing. In order to do this, I'm going to begin by creating a melody that a singer can actually sing. All right, so to pull this off properly, start with something that you like the sound. Go up to the chord track. There's a button here that says show the scales. If you go to the chord track and select it, over on the tab that says chord track, typically it's already gonna be checked at automatic scales. That means as Cubase is taking its best shot at figuring out what scale is best to match the chords that you have. You're probably gonna to wanna to keep this for now until you get a little experience. But once you get a little experience, you can uncheck this you can go to the area where it shows the scale and double click on this and then you can click on that option and you'll get this long list of possible scales. You can even go to the bottom and set up your own scale. Again, I've done a video on all of this stuff if you want to check it out. But you can experiment with any of these scales and Cubase will follow these scales as you create your melodies. We're going to stay simple for now. I'm going to pick one down here that says the major pentatonic plus. That may or may not be in your list. And then I'm going to set up a four bar loop here and I'm going to pluck out some kind of melody. Hit the record. And simplicity is the key on this. You don't want to make something so complicated that it's hard to sing with too many notes, just a basic rhythm, and that's all you really need. In many ways, Cubase will do all the work for you as long as you can get some kind of rhythm going. And even that, Quantize, will help you with your rhythms. So for this, I went four bars at a time, created pretty much the same idea with slight little variations as we go. And ultimately, we ended up with this.
Now, the next thing, once we get this going, we have to find the right key for whatever voice we're going for. In this case, we're going to use my voice. And for now, I'm just going to sing basic vowels just to see where this fits on my voice. Da, 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 da. I can already tell I'm working too hard at it. I'm going to bring it down a few notches. And here's where we get some of the magic tools from Cubase. By just selecting the tracks I need to change, in this case, I'll pick that melody, take the bass part, take all of these synth parts. But I won't select the drums or the transitions because I'm not going to want to affect those. And up on the top in the info line, we have a transpose field. And all I have to do up here is pick different transpose options, and I can immediately change the key of this song. And I don't need to know what key it's in. All I need to do is find something that's comfortable to sing. So I'm going to start by playing it. And then I'm going to change the transpose. Then I'm going to sing along with it and find something that works for me. And then after some experimentation, I landed on this. Na, 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 na. And so we begin. All right, next up on our songwriting list of events, we have to start creating some kind of lyrics because the definition of our song is words and music. Once again, we have some great tools to work with to help us move through this. If I go down to my melody that I've just created and I come up to the menu that says scores, I can come down to an option that says open the score editor. In the score editor, I now have a note representation of my melody. If I make sure I have the acoustic feedback button on, the upper left, when I hit a note, I'm going to hear it. And I can use my right and left arrows to actually move through the notes on my melody. Now, I've begun the process a little bit here already, but if you notice, above the notes, there are words, or rather, lyrics. Because in the score editor, we are given the option to actually write lyrics that are then associated with the notes. Now, I'll give you a couple of lyric writing tips. One thing you can do is just sit down and write a bunch of thoughts, a paragraph or two, whatever you're feeling at the moment, or whatever you want to write your song about. And then as you're creating lyrics, you can look at that little story you just created and pull some of your lyric ideas from that. Or another approach is to write completely ridiculous, nonsensical words just to get the layout of your lyrics. They don't have to make sense or relate to anything. And then you can replace those later with more meaningful lyrics once you have some idea of how your song lays out. A famous example of that back in pop music history is when Paul McCartney wrote the song Yesterday, which was one of the biggest songs of all time in that period. Even though the song starts out Yesterday, which is a memorable lyric full of sentiment and emotion, when he first wrote the song, he called it Scrambled Eggs. So these kind of techniques have been used for a long, long time. So don't fail to take advantage of them in your own songs. And then another approach is to do what I'm going to show you right now, and that's just go by stream of consciousness. And that means we're going to focus on whatever emotion I'm feeling or thought process or whatever, but I'm just going to write my lyrics based on that. But the thing you want to gather from this is how we can put these words on these notes, basically creating a lead sheet for yourself so you can follow along with your new lyrics. In order to do this in the score editor here, we pick a note that we want to start with. I'm going to select these notes down here because I haven't finished them yet. If I play the loop of these notes, I just go to the first note and click on it with my mouse. And then I go over into this left area and find this tab that says symbols. I go down to the area of symbols. It says other. And in the other tab, when I open it up, there's a box here that says text. And right next to that, there's a box that says lyrics. And if I click on the lyrics, mouse now becomes a little pencil. And if I go over the note that I just highlighted and click with my pencil, it turns into a text editing field. And at that point, I can just start typing in words. Again, stream of consciousness, I'm just going to go for the word now. And if I hit the tab key, it moves to the next note. And I'll type in the word I. I'm going to hit my tab key. I'm going to type in the word have. Hit the tab key. Type in the word found. Again, I'm just typing words off the top of my head. Hit the tab key, the letter A, tab key. I'll type the word new, tab key, and the word way. Then I'll finish the rest on my own in a minute. Now I have a lyric going, now I have found a new way, which is now linked to these notes. And then I just move on till I finish my song. But the brilliant thing about this option is number one, it has a beginning and an ending point. We know we have to do our first note. We have to carry on through to our last note. So we know what the job actually is. In terms of laying out our lyrics, we have these notes to follow to help us sing the song. Even if you don't read music, 
You can see which notes are the same, helping you to know when you have to sing the same note, and then which notes go lower and which notes go higher. As I go through my song, if I need to change some lyrics, I can do a number of things. One thing is just to click on a word, in this case the word times, to change it to when. You have the option when you're breaking up a single word. For example, on this note, I'm going to put the word follow. So I begin typing F-O-L. If I want, I can add a little hyphen key. And then when I hit my tab and type the rest of the word L-O-W, it actually puts that hyphen between the word follow. And then next up, let's talk about how to actually record and track some of this stuff. Now, this next thing I'm going to show you, I've been wanting to share for quite a while and just haven't been able to find the right situation or video to share it in. So I'm glad I can finally do it in this video. And that's talking about how I set up my audio tracks when I'm doing recording. Anytime I bring in an audio track to record, like I'm gonna record this microphone, I always record with three different audio tracks. And let me explain why. As you can see down here, I've set up three different audio tracks and all three of these are set up to capture my microphone. The first audio track, I only use to monitor myself and hear myself. By using the track this way, I always keep the monitor button on. One thing I was having issues with early on when I was using Cubase, various times when I was recording, depending on the mode I was using, how I set the recording process up, this monitor button was getting turned off on me, whether Cubase did it automatically or it happened when I selected other tracks, and that just wasn't working for me. I needed this monitor button to stay on all the time. So what I did is I just created a track dedicated to just having this monitor on. Never record on this track, strictly to hear myself and to leave the monitor button on. The next audio track, which most of the time is really all I need, is to capture the actual recordings. So if I was going to begin overdubbing on this song and capture my voice, I would highlight the second microphone track to activate it. I would hit record, and then I would begin singing and putting on my tracks and my takes. As you can see here, it's captured the audio of me talking. And I would let that play over and over again until I got the takes I wanted, and then I would move on. But when I move on, that's when I found out I needed this other track. Because what was happening when I just kept this original track and kept recording, depending on where I started from, many times I would overwrite or cut off something essential from the takes I just made, and that was just causing me a problem as well. So I found that if I created another audio track, and then whether I started in the same spot or moved on to the song somewhere, again highlighting that track and hitting record, I knew I could start recording without having to worry about doing anything to my original recordings. And this allowed me to have overlaps if I needed, or just not have to worry about damaging my previous takes. And many times I'll continue on through the recording process like this. I'll move my loop point wherever I need to. I'll go back to the original track. I'll start recording again. I'll make as many takes as I need to capture that audio. And I'll have these little chunks of audio as I go down the line. But what's nice is I never have to worry about one group of takes overwriting or changing some other previous takes. So that's what I always do. I have one track to monitor on all the time that I never record on. And then I have two separate audio tracks that capture all the recording, typically in an alternating style like this, as I proceed through the song. Let me show you something about the Cubase recording modes. I'm going to go up to Edit, down to Preferences. If I scroll down this long list until I get to the VST option, as I look over on the right, right towards the bottom, there's an option that says Auto Monitoring. And here's where you have these different modes you can set up that will affect how that monitor button reacts. Right now I have it on Manual. And that's the way I leave it, meaning that if I turn that button on, that monitor button stays on until I turn it off. But you have all these other options. Right when record enabled, while record is running, and then the tape machine style, which is also another great option. I've done in-depth videos on all of these. And they're in the digital audio manual to check out. But I leave it on this manual, and I make my own decision when I want to monitor a track and when I want to turn it off. And that's really it. From here, it's time to get down to the music. And that's what we're going to do right now. So with my lyrics in place, my lead sheet in front of me that I can follow along, my three audio tracks ready to go, one for monitoring, the other two for recording, it's time to create these audio tracks from our newly created melody and lyrics. So I'm going to go through this, do some multiple takes, and when I get something I like, I'll come back and share it with you. See you in a minute. All right, as they say by George, I think we've got it. So I'm going to hit this, let it play. I hope some of you find the techniques and inspiration to begin writing your own songs if you're not doing it already. I can only tell you that being able to express myself through music has brought me to many unexpected places in my life, places that would have never happened any other way. And I can only hope the same experience for you. Enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. So as the clouds disappear, whoa, whoa. No, no.
people living in fear No, no Who break you to follow the sun? Everyone No more for life on the run That's all done Just when you thought you were through Whoa, whoa The best is coming to you Yes, true And now we found a new way Hey, hey Here's where we're all gonna stay Every day all right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we began talking about the song creation process. I suggested starting with a chord track, filling in some basic VST tracks, and then we got into creating a melody for the singer. We talked about how to create some lyrics. Then we used the score editor to create a lead sheet with our lyrics. We talked about the recording process, an option to use three audio tracks, one just for monitoring, and then the other two to actually capture the recordings. And when it was all said and done, we listened to our song with its new words, lyrics, and music. And we will continue to explore all these different features and functions with Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.